Australian native Rupert Murdoch is so much more than just the spiritual influence of popular succession main character Logan Roy. He's also one of the most wealthy men on the planet with a wild number of real estate holdings. Rupert got his start by inheriting his father's newspaper at the age of just 22. He then involved himself in all aspects of the paper's production, from writing copy to managing the printers before increasing his paper circulation a thousandfold and expanding his legacy by becoming one of the most respected businessmen in the world. With an estimated net worth of around $16.9 billion, Rupert doesn't just own one of the globe's most powerful and influential media conglomerates encompassing Fox News, the Times of London and the Wall Street Journal, he also enjoys an extravagant lifestyle, the kind that only a billionaire can with homes all across the world. Take for instance his North American West Coast home base a winery situated in Bel Air, California that he bought in 2013 for a reported $28.8 million. Originally a horse ranch that was home to Victor Fleming, the director of both Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz, this 13 acre spread was then sold in the late 50s to a businessman named Tom Jones, who in the early 80s planted the first rows of grapevines that now produce the estate's specialty wine. With soil and climate cooled by Pacific breezes, this location now produces a variety of different wines. Decades later, Murdoch would spot a listing for the property and knew immediately that he wanted to make it his. Named Moraga Bel Air, not much is publicly known about the interior of Rupert's winery, but it's believed the entire property spans almost three quarters of an acre. Meanwhile, records suggest that the land includes a 7,500 square foot home that was first built in 1939 and boasts five bedrooms as well as five bathrooms, along with other expansive rooms, all of which contain much of their original details. There's also an outdoor garden and swimming pool around back. Rupert made this estate his home away from home whenever he happens to be visiting the West Coast. But whenever he's back on the East Coast, Rupert Murdoch oversees his empire from the top of a New York City penthouse. A man with as much money as Rupert Murdoch doesn't just own one home in the city that never sleeps. He owns multiple homes, sometimes even within the same building. Back in 2014, this media mogul purchased the top four floors in the luxurious 60-story building known as One Madison Park Tower in the Big Apple's Flatiron District for an eye-popping $57.5 million. At the time, that sale was so large it set a new record for the city. Every unit in this building is so large that it covers at least one entire floor. But Rupert is lucky enough to own four complete stories all to himself, comprised of two different apartments. The first and largest apartment is a 6,800 square foot triplex penthouse situated on floors 58 through 60, which boasts a total of six bedrooms, including a primary suite, as well as staff quarters, five bathrooms, and an extra powder. Room. While the interiors throughout this gorgeous home are surprisingly plain and simple, that choice helps ensure that the dramatic views are all anyone wants to talk about. There's also a stunning great room with 20 foot tall ceilings as well as walls of glass that open to a 590 square foot wraparound terrace. Elsewhere is a lovely looking staircase that leads upwards to the two top floors. Of course, if stairs aren't really your thing, like they're probably not for Rupert who's well into his 90s, there is also a private elevator that can be put to use. Of course, no home for someone who likes to wheel and deal as much as Rupert would be complete without a formal dining room to close a few business deals over a five star meal that was no doubt prepared in the property's sleekly appointed kitchen. On floors 59 and 60, you'll come across the four ensuite guest rooms, all of which come with their own private bath, as well as the master suite, which offers a dressing room and a marble tub. The other unit, a 3,300 square foot spread on the 57th floor, is reportedly used by Murdoch to house the majority of his staff and guests. This apartment offers three bedrooms, all ensuite and a powder room of its own. There's also a 28 foot long primary suite that includes another bathroom entirely clad in marble. I wonder how Murdoch's staff settled on who got that room. Shortly after acquiring both of these apartments, Rupert would combine them as one and list the entire property for a reported $72 million. Unfortunately for him, he's never found a buyer, even to this day. And by all accounts, Rupert continues to spend the vast majority of his time in New York City living out of this address. 
But that might change with the recent news that Rupert bought himself a new 6,500 square foot full floor apartment with views of Central Park on the 27th floor of a co-op building. It's not entirely clear how much Rupert spent, but the last time this seven bed and seven bath unit was listed on the market, the owners were asking for $30 million. Now that he owns it, the crown jewel in Rupert's new home is a 720 square foot great room with 18 foot tall ceilings and three huge arch glass doors that lead out towards a 46 foot long terrace centered over Central Park South. On one side of the great room, you'll find the estate's formal dining room that joins the nearby black and white tiled entrance hall. At the other end of the apartment is the unit's master suite, which was formerly a spacious library, but now boasts massive windows, a fireplace with period appropriate details, as well as a large dressing room with a separate walk-in closet. In the attached bath, you'll find a window bathtub and intricate flooring that depicts fish as well as other sea life. It's pretty much the perfect place to live in the heart of the big city. But if Rupert ever wants to escape to the country, he's got options there as well. In December 2021, Rupert picked up a roughly 345,000 acre working cattle ranch known as Beaverhead in southwest Montana that he purchased from another very famous and wealthy family, the Cokes. Situated just south of the city of Dillon, near Yellowstone National Park, this jaw-dropping $200 million sale took place off-market in what is reportedly the priciest and largest land deal in Montana history. Spanning 50 miles across two county lines, the ranch's most impressive features are a 28-mile-long river used for trout fishing and a total of 25 homes, most of which are used by employees. But people aren't the only resource around here. This ranch is said to house nearly 7,000 cows along with 4,000 elk, 800 antelope, and 1,500 mule deer. In fact, back in 2002, this estate became the first U.S. ranch to receive wildlife at work certification from the Wildlife Habitat Council for Outstanding Natural Resource Management Initiatives. Whether or not that'll remain the case now that Rupert owns it remains to be seen. Well, when he wants to escape to the city again, Rupert can also travel a bit further to one of his two homes located outside of the United States. Whenever he's back home visiting the land down under, Rupert Murdoch sets up shop in his Australian ranch known as Coven Station. Situated in New South Wales, this property was purchased way back in the 1960s when Rupert was only worth a fraction of what he is today. It then played a significant role in Australia's production of fine wool and today it largely operates as a 25,000 acre sheep and cattle ranch. According to the Australian, whenever Rupert or his family are back home, this is is where everyone tends to gather and one station manager told the newspaper back in 2018 their affection for this property is that it is the place they meet as a family it makes them feel Australian well if Rupert would rather feel anything other than Australian for a day he could also head over to the United Kingdom where a few years ago he bought a Georgian family home for 14.5 million dollars formerly known as a haven for the 19th century poets Algernon Charles Swine Burn and Lord Tennyson. This incredible palace was built in the 1700s and two centuries later would become the home of Rupert Murdoch when he bought it in 2019 alongside his then wife Jerry Hall. Boasting 11 bedrooms each with their own bathroom, not to mention an infinity pool, library, and even its own ballet studio. This one-of-a-kind gem also sits in an area of outstanding beauty with formal gardens and an outdoor pool. I don't think that these beautiful properties could even close to enough use as they should, but will Rupert Murdoch continue to add on to his immense real estate portfolio as the years go on? Well, with the recent news of his freshly finalized divorce from Jerry, Rupert might have more time on his hands than ever before to keep adding to his collection. Until we hear about his newest home, keep it locked on this channel and before you leave, consider answering the following question. If you owned more than one home, how would you decide where to spend the majority of your time? Let me know how you'd split living in different properties in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name's Kara. Thanks so much for watching today. And if you want to check out another tour, then we've got a look inside the homes of Bill and Hillary Clinton coming up. I'll see you all next time. Bye. 
In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Bill and Hillary Clinton have definitely transitioned from middle class to multimillionaires over the years. And it's notable when we take a look at the couple's home. The first property Bill and Hillary lived at before they were public figures is located in Arkansas, and the quaint one bedroom spread has now been made into a museum. Well, after this, the Clintons lived in government provided residences for 18 years. This included the governor's mansion in Arkansas to the White House. After Bill's run as president of the United States, the couple would settle into their current home in 1999, a four-level white Georgian colonial located in Chappaqua, New York. Before we look at Bill and Hillary Clinton's main family home, let's check out some they've lived in over the years. The first known property of the couple before they became public figures is a quaint residence that's now on the National Register of Historic Places. Located in Arkansas, more specifically in the area of Fayetteville, this humble abode spanned 1,800 square feet of space and offered only one bedroom. The future president of the United States and Secretary of State were married in the living room of this home in October of 1975, and it was an active center for political activity in Arkansas during these years. Almost two decades later, Bill and Hillary would enter the White House. The home, which is now a museum, is a well-maintained 1930s Tudor revival style in the Ozark Mountains. These days, the exhibits at the museum include memorabilia from Bill's early political career and even more personal items like a replica of Hillary's wedding dress. Outside, the home offers the First Lady's Garden, which is stocked full of Hillary's favorite flowers. Next up, the Clintons lived in this Arkansas home from 1976 to 1978 while Bill was the Attorney General of Arkansas in Little Rock. The also humbly sized two bedroom abode was a stepping stone for the couple before they would move into the governor's mansion. Bill and Hillary would live in the governor's mansion in Little Rock two separate times, considering Clinton served as the governor of this state for five terms, from 1979 to 1981, and then again from 1983 to 1992. The large mansion was a step up from what the couple was used to with its opulent exterior, fountains, and all. As I'm sure you know, the Clintons would next move into the White House when Bill became president of the United States from 1993 to 2001. Bill, Hillary, and their daughter Chelsea called this place home for nearly a decade, and in 2000, in, the pair gave a tour of the home for Fox News. The stateroom also got a redesign from Hillary herself during their tenure here. After Bill and Hillary departed the White House after his run as president, they found a home on Old House Lane in Chappaqua, New York, which they quickly snapped up for $1.7 million in 1999. This home also served as their residence while Hillary Clinton was a New York senator from 2001 to 2009. And surprisingly enough, the couple still reside in this very home while their daughter moved to New York City. The Clintons keep their main home tightly under wraps, but it's a four-story white Georgian colonial abode, and from what we have seen, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Located on a tree-lined cul-de-sac, the property spans a sprawling 1.1 acres of land, while the main house's exterior is characterized by the barn-like shape of the roof. The home was built in 1889, which is certainly old and historic, but this area of New York apparently has quite a bit of homes from this time period. While the home cost the Clintons nearly $2 million, it was said that they were up to their ears in debt at the time of purchase from legal bills while they were in the White House. They first accepted help from a friend and fundraiser, Terry McAuliffe, to secure the mortgage on the Chappaqua home, but they turned down his offer due to criticism from the public. They got it either way. Tucked away in a wooded area, the Clintons live 35 miles outside of New York City, while inside the home offers 11 rooms, including a reported five bedrooms and four baths. On the grounds of the home, there's a large swimming pool as well as other features like a red barn structure. The barn is apparently where the family's security staff used to live. A large white fence surrounds their property while an additional security office was placed at the front gate for protection. When Bill and Hillary first chose this home, neighbors weren't too pleased. Chappaqua had a small population and residents didn't want all the commotion that this famous family might bring. No local country or golf clubs would admit the Clintons at first as members worried about the disruption they would create. So back then, Bill and Hillary had to find the next closest option, so they joined Donald Trump's Trump National Golf Club Westchester. I wonder if any of the clubs are letting them in these days. Their home was known in the town's history as Little Brook Farm, and it seemed a bit unimpressive for a family of their caliber. A real estate agent at the time the Clintons moved in 
said the lovely living space included a large living room that flowed into a library, which is perfect for book loving Bill. And there was also a family room connected to the kitchen as well as a sunroom. Back in the early 2000s, fans also got a glimpse inside the residence when Bill took Oprah on a tour of the property in a short segment on her talk show. Bill showed off his favorite rooms in the home as well as the couple's collection of mementos from their world travels. These included a South African souvenir and a large rain stick. He also took viewers inside that red barn, which was converted into the space that it is today, serving as a guest house or staff quarters or whatever. In 2016, Bill and Hillary Clinton reportedly expanded on their longtime home in Chappaqua by purchasing the house next door for $1.16 million. The ranch style abode is set on just over 1.5 tree dotted acres on the same cul-de-sac they've been living in. Rumors were that the new home could possibly have been meant as a visiting retreat for the couple's daughter Chelsea and her family, including her two kids. Inside the additional home spanned 3,631 square feet of space, along with three bedrooms throughout and a 212 square foot basement. The property had been recently renovated and offered an open plan layout with a ton of windows, adding natural light as well as pecan colored wood floors underfoot. Other highlights of this property included a modern chef's kitchen with brand name appliances, which then opened to an eating area with fireplace, as well as a spacious family room with built-ins and elsewhere. The master suite boasted a recently redone ensuite as well as two large walk-in closets. Out back, there was a chic swimming pool surrounded by patio space and sun lounger. The only time in recent years that the Chappaqua home doesn't serve as the Clintons' main home is when Hillary is in residence at the Capitol. In that case, the couple also maintains a property called Whitehaven, which they've owned since departing the White House. In 2019, Hillary offered a rare peek into their part-time mansion located in Washington, D.C., which was a neo-Georgian residence that she'd redone over the years. Located a mere three kilometers from the White House, this property cost the Clintons $2.85 million and spans 5,500 square feet of space. This daily mansion features an airy conservatory room and out on the grounds, there's a large swimming pool and stunning gardens. Hillary said when they were looking at this home, the gardens were just the most amazing that I had seen anywhere in my real estate tour. Clearly, Hillary has a thing for gardens. After purchasing the red brick built house, which dates back to 1951, Hillary had the place extensively renovated from 2003 to 2006. She had the help of interior designer Rosemary Howe to help carry this out and in the end, the home was more light filled with open plan spaces to relax and entertain. Most of the rooms now also open to the gorgeous gardens outside. Some of the other things that were done to the Clintons Washington home included refitting the bathrooms and kitchens as well as new furnishings. At the time, Hillary said she loves using the outdoor area at this property, post large groups of people as there's plenty of space, the landscaped garden, pool, and even a pool house. All right, everyone. Now that we've checked out the homes of Bill and Hillary Clinton over the years, that's gonna wrap up today's house tour. Before we go, answer this question for me. If you ever lived in the White House, what do you think would be your favorite perk or part of the property to enjoy? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat.